Welcome to my presentation, Energy Intake and Energy Expenditure. So, what is the definition of energy? The definition of energy is the strength and vitality required for sustained physical or mental activity. Energy is measured in kilocalories and kilojoules. Calories are a measurement of energy in food. All foods will have different amount of calories in them and knowing what amounts of calories we consume can benefit us greatly as sports performers. For example, the government recommend, the government recommend 2,000 calories each day for the average man. However, this changes depending on our metabolic rate, which I will explain later. We measure calories in kilocalories because if we measure calories in singles, it would be a too big a number, so we measure in kilocalories. Kilocalories are 1,000 calories on a packet of food, and you will see X amount of calories, or K calories. So, for example, on a chocolate bar, there'd be 200 K calories on them. But in actual fact, there's like 2,000 in there. We just do it, or 200,000 in there. We just do it as a simpler form. So we also measure energy in kilojoules. This is the international system for measuring energy. So within food, there are micro and macronutrients, and these give the body energy. So for one gram of carbohydrate, there is four kilocalories. For one gram of fat, there is nine kilocalories. For one gram of protein, there is four kilocalories. There are three different ways of measuring uh, body composition. So we have skin fold calipers, bioelectrical impedance analysis, and hydrodensitometry. Hydrodensitometry. Can't say that word very well. Skin fold calipers are very cheap to buy, which is an advantage because they are most readily available. However, to get correct, accurate results, they need to be used by a professional who is trained and in who is trained in using them. Skin fold calipers work by stretching the skin, testing the layers of fat between each layer of skin, and after the measurements have been taken in seven or several places on the body, a calculation is done to work out overall body fat. So that's good if um, you're a trained professional, because it's cheap, readily available. Uh, the next one is bioelectrical impedance analysis, which is accurate measure of body composition if hydrated. However, it uses average populations to get body fat percentages, so it would be less reliable for an athlete. Um, so furthermore, if you aren't hydrated enough, then the equipment will give unreliable results because the equipment works by sending an electrical current through the body and hitting fat. If you're not hydrated enough, the blood viscosity level in the body will become higher and therefore mistake it as fat and therefore give us unreliable and inaccurate results. And the last form of measuring body composition is hydrodensity. Hydrodensity is very accurate, however, it is very expensive and not available for everyone. The athlete is weighed in a tank while totally immersed in water. Uh, fat is less dense than floats in water, so the more fat the athlete has, the greater the difference between the dry and wet weight, so they get weighed before they go in, and then they get weighed when they go in, and then a calculation will be done. So, metabolic rates. So, basal metabolic rate is uh, the amount of energy required to sustain your body's vital functions in a wakened state. So that could be awake, just lying down or sitting, doing absolutely nothing. Um, and the average adult will use around 1.1 kilocalorie every minute. So your basal metabolic rate is affected by age, gender, climate and physical energy, which I'll come on to later. And the next part is energy intake, so calorimetry. So there's direct and indirect. So direct measures the amount of heat the body produces. However, it is expensive, so... Having an athlete working in that airtight chamber or a human calorie meter 
so the participant will be working in this airtight chamber and then as they start to produce a sweat or get hot then coils in the ceiling contain water circulating at a specific temperature so the athlete's uh, body radiating heat will heat up the energy and the athlete has a mouthpiece on so they can breathe but apart from that the whole chamber is airtight and indirect estimates heat production by measuring uh, respiratory gases so it estimates heat production by doing it via a Douglas bag collection or a gas analysis system so energy consumption is calculated from amount of oxygen consumed so that's one liter of oxygen equals 4.8 kilocalories and here's a product analysis just to give some overall uh, thought on how much we can consume. So serious mass is a mass gaining protein powder and it is a re meal replacement for people to look to build size. So serious mass um, has 50 grams of protein, 250 grams of carbohydrates and, and 4 grams of fat and that comes out as 1,250 calories. So if we compare that to Usain Bolt, Usain Bolt uses um, 94 calories to run the 100 meters. So that translates into 23.5 kilojoules of energy to run the 100 meters. However, this is running at a constant, whereas Usain Bolt normally slows down towards the end, which doesn't make it as accurate. So, however, you say Bolt will continue to carry on burning energy after he's done the event. Um, but that was just a product analysis to give a general feel about how much calories we can now consume in just one small amount. So, energy balance. So, basal metabolic rate. So, to work out basal metabolic rates, you need to uh, do your weight and height and times by 10 and then take away 5 times your age then plus 5 so mine worked out as 1988 calories a day so with me waking up sitting in a chair doing nothing all day I'd still need 1988 calories whereas Dan because he's a little bit smaller and doesn't weigh as much, his calorie intake will be 1,749. Um, so what affects this? So when you're in adolescence, uh, so your childhood, um, your basal metabolic rate will be a lot higher because you're growing muscles, growing bones, uh, developing. So you'll need more calories. Um, however, if you're like in your 60s or 60 plus then that's when your uh, metabolic rate starts to slow down because you don't need to consume as much because you're not burning as much energy uh, gender so men will typically burn more calories than women due to the fact that of their hormone and their muscular build so men have more testosterone which equates for a bigger muscle mass which means they will burn more energy throughout or more calories throughout the day um, and your climate will affect you so if you're doing a, a ski run then you won't need as many calories compared to if you're working in heat burning off more energy so how do METs work alongside BMR so METs are your um, how much calories you'll burn in an activity. So let's take a, a 68 kilogram footballer who plays a 60 minute game of football. So as you can see at the bottom there, that's the equation. And it works out as 572 kilocalories an hour. So that footballer who is 68 kilograms playing a one hour game of football will burn 572 calories. So he will then have to add that onto his diet so if he had a basal metabolic rate of 1,800, he will then have to plus that onto his basal metabolic rate. Um, and then just analysing a professional. 
So you say Bolt, his BMR is 2,146 calories a day because he's at 1.95 meters tall and he is 95 kilograms. So he would also have to have more carbohydrate because he's always consuming en uh, burning energy. Because his basal metabolic rate is if he was in a state of no energy uh, expenditure, whereas he will be working hard day in, day out. So his calorie intake will be around 5,000 calories. So that means his carbohydrates will have to go up, his proteins will have to go up, and his fats will go up. His carbohydrates will equate for a different percentage, and his protein will uh, be a different percentage because he'll need a higher percent of protein to the average person to get better recovery, whereas his fat will decrease. So he'll be eating more protein foods, and protein has a lower calorie content, so he'll be eating more. Uh, however, if he's working in a, a hot climate, then we would expect this to go up a lot more. Um, and as he ages, so he's now 30 years old, his me uh, his metabolic rate is starting to slow down, but nowhere near as much as he would be at 60. Um, and because he's a male, he's got a lot of muscle mass. He'll be burning energy more rapidly because he'll have more muscle contractions and you need energy to make a muscle contra a contraction. Um, and then you'll need your more protein and carbohydrates to recover the muscle uh, muscles used after exercise, after sprint, after a heavy weight session. So that was my energy intake and energy expenditure PowerPoint.